TheDailyMass.com. Experience the Roman Catholic Mass from historic St. Louis Cathedral every day on TheDailyMass.com. His love anywhere in the world. Good evening, I'm Sarah McDonald. And I'm Jason Angelette. Welcome to another edition of Issues in Faith. Today we're here at the Archdiocese of New Orleans Retreat House where women have been coming on retreats for over 50 years. Well, join us as we go inside and learn more about this beautiful ministry. We're here in the library at the Archdiocese of New Orleans Retreat Center in Metairie, formerly known as the Seneca, and I'm joined by Shannon Adams and Linda Sinceri, two retreat captains here for the Archdiocese Retreat Center. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having us. Well, first of all, I, I want our viewers to, to feel like they know you all. Give us a little bit of background about, uh, about yourselves. Um, I am Shannon Adams. I grew up in Metairie, live in New Orleans, sit, modded, and attend a church at Mata Della Rosa mm -hmm. Parish, and I'm a mother of three. Wow, and Linda? Uh, Linda Sinceri grew up in Lakeview. Um, I'm a parishioner at St. Francis and on Metairie Road, and um, have three adult children and seven grandchildren. Count them up. Yeah. <laughs> They start to multiply yeah. those families. I just wanted to be sure I counted everyone. Very good. Well, again, I, I want to thank you for being with us to talk about this very important ministry here in the Archdiocese. When Archbishop Amen and the Archdiocese purchased the Seneca, um, he was very clear that he wanted this to remain a center for women and their families. And, and it's a ministry that um, we want to make sure that as many people can take advantage of as possible. So I want to ask you each, what the retreat experience, how, how long you've been coming, and what this retreat experience has meant for you in your lives. And Shannon? Um, I started coming here about 17 years ago, and then I became a captain shortly after that. Wow. Um, I started coming as a young mother, and this was just was such a blessing to me. You know, as, as most women or most mothers, um, you get so caught up in your life, and your faith life is important, and you try to attend church, and you try to do other things to keep it on track, but um, this is such a unique experience to make you really take pause and commune with God in a special way. And um, once you get here, you don't want to leave. <laughs> and once you come, you want to look forward to your next time to come. So I was hooked immediately after coming, and it's been a real blessing to my life. And it's true. I, I mean, I know from experience of three little ones, it's hard to, to break away. It's hard to leave those children. But as, as you say, you need that time personally for, for refreshing your soul and, and finding God to re-energize you to go back exactly. <laughs> to the home with exactly. the children. Exactly. So. Well, Linda, how long have you been involved in, and what's your experience been? Uh, I came on my first retreat as a young mom as well, but in the early 70s. And... Um, similar to what Shannon has said, um, to have that time to be quiet, to be peaceful. I had three, of course, young children at the time. Um, and when I think of the retreat center today, I am always, always amazed how you could drive through these gates over those many years after that first retreat. And here we are in the middle of Metairie, not too far from West Esplanade, from the interstate, and yet you would ride through these gates and there was just a peace and serenity mm -hmm. that this place held for you as we would come in often on a Friday evening. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that has touched my heart since then was when the Archbishop came to do the rededication mass from moving from the Seneca to the retreat house. And... Um, he talked about this being God's dream house. And I, that so touched my heart because when he talked about how often people talk about their dream home and they either build or buy their dream home. And he said, this is God's dream home. 
This is where women for over 55 years have been coming, coming for quiet, for peace, mm -hmm. sometimes needing to uh, just be away, sometimes people looking for direction, sometimes people looking for consolation mm -hmm. in grief, loss, broken, looking for forgiveness. And that has certainly been true in my life personally over the many years that I've been coming on retreat here. And so as I think about it today, uh, this certainly is God's dream house. Yeah, that was poignant when the Archbishop said that in the rededication mass. I know you both mentioned, you, as I, and I did too, you're captains of the retreat. What does that mean and, and what has been that experience to connect other women to the retreat house, well, first the Seneca and now to the retreat center? It's been a gift for me. Um, you know, it's when you love something and something means a lot to you, it's very easy to share. And so once you talk to people about your own personal experience, it usually gets them excited if they're looking for the same type of thing um, to come. And I found the same thing with me. Once they get here, you know, they're hooked. Back. They want to come back. <laughs> so um, I guess that's my answer. Yeah. Sure. And Linda? It's, as Shannon, it's been an honor and a privilege. I said yes to being a captain because I felt like the retreats had meant so much to me that I certainly wanted to give back. And as often the case, I've gotten so much more than I was ever get, have given as a captain. And I had a wonderful experience when uh, the retreat center was transitioning uh, from the Senegal to the Archdiocese Retreat Center, uh, I had the opportunity to help with speaking to all of the captains, mm -hmm. and I was able to speak to many of the captains in the greater New Orleans area. And I was so touched by how much individual captains, not only themselves had had experiences here that had made such a difference in their lives, but also all the people that they had captained and mm -hmm. brought to the house, and also the gratitude that people had to the Archbishop for having or being able to continue this yes. for yeah. women. It's very moving to see women for other women, and even on a retreat weekend. It's such a powerful experience, and that, that opportunity to interview these ladies and to tell them that the retreat center was continuing gave me they witnessed to me so many of the stories that I had heard over the years mm -hmm. and was reminded again. So we're running very short on time, but if you had a woman, 30 seconds, in the elevator, how would you, what would you say to her if she asked you about coming on a retreat to get her here? Please give the best gift that I can tell you to give to yourself. Come to the Seneca. Excuse me, I still call it the Seneca. It'll always be the Seneca. <laughs> Please come and take some time for yourself. You will have a um, wonderful experience, and your li it will help impact your life for the rest of the year if you can come for a weekend. Please come to God's dream house so you can <laughs> find out what God's dreams are for you. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, I want to thank you both for your commitment to the Seneca and the Retreat Center throughout um, several years. Uh, each one of you, I, I, I'm impressed that um, anything that has that kind of staying power in anyone's life is definitely a worthwhile gift from God. So I want to thank you for witnessing that here with us tonight and, and throughout the year. Thank you, Shannon and Linda, for being with us. And when we come back, Jason will sit down with the director of the Archdiocese of New Orleans Retreat House. This is Issues in Faith. WRBH 88.3 FM provides blind and print handicapped listeners with programs that inform and entertain. To learn more, contact 504-899-1144 or wrbh.org. What will the world ask of them? Whatever it is, they'll be prepared to answer. Because in a safe and disciplined environment, Louisiana Catholic schools shape tomorrow's leaders. Catholic students are rising. 99% graduate. Almost all go to college. They'll earn higher wages, be community involved, more tolerant of diverse views. And the world will be better because of them. Louisiana Catholic schools. 
in a class of their own. Welcome back to Issues in Faith, and I'm here with Dr. Paul Caesar, the director for the, this beautiful retreat center. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Jason. So uh, first year under the belt, so how's it been for you? I can still remember when you interviewed me when I was just yep. starting, and I had the, the deer in the headlight look, and I, <laughs> I understand that. But yeah. it has been a wonderful year. Mm -hmm. It really has. I, I feel like we have set a nice foundation yeah. you know, to build on for the future, and part of the foundation was what was given to us by the Cynical Sisters. Yes. You know, an incredible 55 years of, of their ministry here. Mm -hmm. But the, the experience has been wonderful. I, as far as meeting terrific people who had been on retreat for mm -hmm. a number of years, some of whom actually over 50 years. Wow. And then, and then a number of people who have come for the first time. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and as our captains were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the, the way they expressed the experiences they had here was just tremendous. So it's been a good year overall. Uh, you know, like any new transitional types of uh, times, I mean, we've had our challenges. Oh, sure. But it's been good. Well, what about, um, I'm sure, to assure those who maybe have been here before, to, things haven't changed, but at the same time that there are things that are down, that are coming. So can you explain about that? You know, what I, what I started out with, uh, like I said, they had a good foundation here too. And so my theory was that if it ain't broke, don't, you fix, know, it. don't fix it, don't go there. So we've maintained pretty much uh, the ministry is primarily for women. Mm -hmm. The retreats uh, primarily are geared for women. And the format of the retreats had pretty much stayed the same. So we have some that we present uh, about 30 a year mm -hmm. that are pretty much the way it, it always right. has been. We, right. We've made very few changes on that. If people come in on Friday evening. Uh, we have a presenter that, that gives talks throughout the weekend, probably four talks over the weekend. So Friday evening, uh, we maintain silence mm. as much as people are able to do so, <laughs> but maintain silence. And then uh, we have different sacramental experiences. We have Mass each day. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Eucharistic Adoration. Mm -hmm. They have an opportunity for Fantastic. that. They have an opportunity to talk with the retreat presenter, mm -hmm. as well as some uh, people that are trained to do retreat guidance, yeah. and so they have an opportunity for that, and then we have reconciliation service. Wow. So That's it's fantastic. A, yeah, it's a lot of, of really solid, mm -hmm. sacramental, spiritual experiences. On the other hand, you know, we're really trying to open ourselves up to adding some some new dimensions too, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. But uh, so I, I think in many ways we've maintained the structure that people are used to, mm -hmm. and then we're also looking into some new things too. Like you said, if, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And if that's been a winning, successful uh, formula, then, then why, why change it? Um, but, uh, but go on ahead, let's move to like those long-term goals. I'm sure coming in here, you, now that you've got a year under the belt, you're looking at things. What are some things down the road that you're looking to hope to do? Really trying to listen to what the needs of the people are. Yeah. You know, we're in a day and time, I think, when people's time you know, is, yeah. is limited. That's right. So we're looking at some days of renewal. We've mm -hmm. had some uh, days of recollection, uh, just one day types of experiences. We have some speakers coming in, yeah. like for a morning or, or an evening. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also opening up uh, things for young adults. So we've had a retreat for uh, young adult women, yeah. uh, many of whom are professionals, have limited amount of time. Sure. So we do an overnight for them. So we're looking at some different formats and some new things. We're also uh, very open to having parish staffs come out yes. and then also um, some high schools. We've hosted mm -hmm. faculty and staff from high schools. So it's been good. You know, it's been a good variety of people that have come out. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was teaching at Rummel, Archbishop Rummel High School, we had our senior retreats here. It was just a beautiful experience. The, the place itself, the grounds, the food was fantastic. And you know, it just it's a, a wonderful opportunity. Well, Abby, you know, Abby Camp on mm -hmm. the North Shore does a lot of the high school retreats, but we've had the Rummel faculty and staff here too, yeah. and, and one day retreats uh, for some of the high schools. And it's great too that you're making a variety. Like I know people for a weekend, that's really challenging with the school and work and whatnot. But um, and a lot of times they don't realize how important that sacrifice is. Right. I think once you go, you realize, okay, as busy as I am, as demanding as work or the home may be, 
I need to make this so that I can be a better husband or better wife, a better, you know, uh, person. So it's something that I think those those smaller opportunities that can definitely springboard into those those. Long, yeah, I'm glad you said that weekends. because it's so true. You know, people get caught up in their routines mm-hmm. and and say, it's hard well, to I don't break have time. It. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, tell us uh, uh, what so far. What's touched your heart the most being here? You know, that's a great question because. Um, when you meet the quality of people that come here, mm-hmm. that have their spirituality just comes through, and they'll yeah. share with me some of the experiences that they had had while yeah. being on retreat in the past, and also being on retreat now. And when they start to share some of the depth of their spiritual struggles, mm. but also how they have found God in yeah. a new way, that is, that's so inspirational. Yeah. So I think for me, I think the most important thing have been the quality of people yeah. that I've that I've been in contact with. And people that are appreciative that the mm. Archdiocese purchased yes. the retreat center and continued the ministry, um, I'm kind of in a in, in many ways a win-win situation, yeah. you know, because people are so appreciative. Archbishop Amos was very insistent upon having this as an opportunity for women, and I think that there's something to say about this opportunity for women, for everybody, re- period of regardless of male or female. Retreats are so important, mm-hmm. and to be able to put the focus and intention into this place is uh, is is really important. And there's a lot of blessings that can come from it. You know, I always say if the walls could speak, Yes. you know, oh, yes. over 55 years of people coming on retreat, if these walls could speak, yeah. I mean, the richness of the prayerfulness yeah. and the spirituality here. Which is so key in all of this. You know, we're, we're not human doings, we're human beings, and we need to be in that relationship with our Lord to really fully realize who we are and what we're called to to hear Him. So we gotta, we got to wrap up, but I just want to ask you, how can people get more involved in this ministry? Well, I, the challenge really is is a financial challenge. I mean, mm-hmm. we want to make quality spirituality experiences here, but also we want to make as much as we can ends sure. meet. And that's part of the reason the sisters uh, ended up leaving. I mean, the financial strain mm-hmm. of maintaining a retreat center. And so uh, we're, we're working with Catholic Foundation, we're mm-hmm. looking at uh, endowments, we're looking yeah. at people that have had enriching experiences here, mm-hmm. somehow being able to give financially some of the, the gifts that they've been given in their life to continue this in the future so people can get involved that way. But, you know, even there to be involved by coming yes. here. Yes. I mean, that's what we want. Taste we just want see. people to be here and to experience Amen. God's presence here. Amen. Well, thank you so much thank you, for Jason. all that you do. God thank bless you. your work and looking forward to having you back on and talking more about the great things here. Thank you. Appreciate it. And when we come back, Sarah will sit down again and we'll learn more about this wonderful retreat center. We never forget our best teachers, the ones who do so much more than teach. They inspire and insist we bring our best in everything we do. We find those mentors in our Catholic schools. It's why Catholic school graduates consistently go on to college, land better jobs, embrace faith, and lead. Louisiana Catholic Schools, in a class of their own. We're back at the Archdiocese of New Orleans Retreat Center, formerly known as the Senecal, and we have two of the staff here at the Retreat Center joining us to talk a little bit more about the programming offered here. We have Diane Sinak, who's a hospitality coordinator, and Noel Dellery, who's one of the ministry team. Thank you for sitting down with us tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Well, first of all, when you say Archdiocese and Retreat Center, people assume there'll be a retreat, but the hospitality ministry is a little bit different, a little something extra that's at the Retreat Center. Describe for me, Diane, what the hospitality ministry is and, and how long you've been involved with it. I've been involved in for seven years and the hospitality ministry is welcoming outside groups to come and use our Retreat Center for their own meetings or their own retreat of all faiths, especially to get away from the distractions and the demands of their their workplaces as well as their homes. Mm-hmm. And not, you're right, not to be in a conference room, not to be sitting around exactly. a table. Uh, I know we've had several schools use the retreat center to, for their faculty retreat. So it's a nice way to, to get a break and, and get away from it all, as our captain said in our, in our previous interview. So when somebody comes in for a, a day of hospitality or a hospitality retreat, what can they ex- sort of expect from, from you all? Well, we offer a serene, a really unique setting here, just a serene setting with a lot of quiet, a chapel, a library, large parlor, 
but mostly they plan their own agenda and we just offer the atmosphere that they love. They, they always say, oh my gosh, this, the distractions of the workplace, we, we always have our meetings at work and this is just what we needed to clear our heads and, and get a lot of work done, or in the case of a retreat, to just recenter themselves. Mm -hmm. It's probably a little Holy Spirit working in there. This is sa pretty sacred. Side. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing that. And Noel, you've been with us for just over a year, correct? Right. And um, working with the retreat ministry and those of those who are coming in for retreats. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's been a blessing um, to be part of the ministry here. It's really been a privilege to see God's powerful movement working during the retreats. Um, you know, the, for someone to um, come away from the busyness of their lives, to spend a few days fostering their relationship with the Lord, it's, it's you know, they, they get restored, replenished. Um, we all need that infilling. You know, you can't give what you don't have. And so... Um, it's the time to receive from the Lord, to receive His love, His life-giving grace, so that they in turn can, can give that to their families and those they encounter day to day. And so um, it's just been an honor to be part of that, to um, help facilitate that happening. And hundreds of people come through the doors every year over the past year. What has been one of the experiences that um, has touched you the most, whether it's seven years or, or just a year working here at, at the retreat center? I find that um, people come with so much on their minds. When they arrive, you can just see it. A, a lot of concerns, a lot of details, a lot, a lot of where's my room. And mm -hmm. when they leave, you can see the transformative power of God, really, that whatever happened during their time here got neutralized and somehow clear mm -hmm. um, peace. Whether so that's been so powerful to see. Very good. Whether it's a walk in the garden or, or in the yacht barn or being here in the chapel, I imagine it yes. melts that tension away. Yes. <laughs> and Noah, what have, what have you experienced in, in the year? What have touched, has touched me a lot is the, the um, commitment. Um, of so many women who have been coming year after year, um, some since the retreat center opened, mm -hmm. and their their faithfulness to it. Um, they um, put it on their calendars, they make time for it, and uh, they don't want to miss it. And it's because, I mean, they're faithful because they know the fruit, they've seen the beautiful, uh, positive fruit. It's, it's born in their, their own relationship with the Lord, and in their own lives, in the lives of their families. And so it's just, um, it, you know, hopefully more, we, we, a lot of newcomers are, are, have been coming to the retreats, but hopefully a lot more women will, will find out what's going on here and, and come and, and receive those benefits that the Lord wants for them. And that's the, the perfect journey. segue to my, to my next question. I was going to ask you, what are some things that you're, you're looking forward to in this new year where everyone's making resolutions, everyone says in January, you know, I'm going to focus more on, on my health or my spiritual life. What are, are you looking forward to in, in this upcoming year with the Retreat Center? I'm looking forward to all of the young people that are coming. And uh, we have some newer events and retreats geared especially for young people. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to seeing them come through the, through the doors. As well as the, the broad range, we, we're expanding in terms of just opening the doors to many different kinds of groups. So people are coming from all over the United States mm -hmm. and even beyond in different groups. Now with the internet, they're finding us there and wanting to come to New Orleans. So it's just wonderful to see uh, the church is alive and well all over, not just in Metairie. Right. No, that's wonderful. And, and Noel. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the women who have been coming year after year who I feel like this is home to mm -hmm. them, but also the, the newcomers, um, people who have come for hospitality retreats who have never been here before. They pick up the brochures and they look at the schedule and they get very excited about it. They want to come. And so I'm looking forward to more and more of that happening. 
Very good. Well, Noel, Diane, I want to thank you for your ministry here at the Retreat Center. I know it couldn't happen without a dedicated staff, so we're very blessed to have everyone here that has welcomed us here tonight, but also who welcomes every woman who walks the door and every group that walks the door every weekend. So we're very grateful for you, and thank you for sitting down with us tonight. Thank you thank so you. much. And we'll be back with more Issues in Faith. The heart of Woman's New Life Center is its outreach to women in unplanned pregnancies, especially those who are seeking an abortion. Our professional counseling services, combined with free ultrasound tests, provide each woman with the nurturing she needs while also revealing her unborn child to her. For more information about the life-saving work of Woman's New Life Center, call 504-831-3117 or visit womansnewlife.com. Hope you've enjoyed learning about this wonderful ministry here at the Archdiocese Retreat Center dedicated to Our Lady of the Cynical. If you'd like to take a, a retreat yourself and learn more about the facility, you can visit retreats.arch-no.org. And don't forget, you can join the conversation by emailing us at issuesinfaith at wlee.com or by finding us on Facebook. And that's all for this episode of Issues in Faith. For all of us here, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. Hope you join us again soon. Until then, God bless. Thank you.